Today, we're taking a look at the new Senior Mobile Mouse in Final Cut Pro, how to get the best results from it, and a few different ways you can use it in your next project. With a 10.6.6 update, Apple added a couple new masking tools in Final Cut Pro, most notably the Senior Mobile Mask. This promises to detect objects in the foreground of a video clip and automatically remove the background without the need for a green screen. But if you don't take the proper steps when filming your clip, this is what you'll end up with. Before you film your clip, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. For the best results, you need to film in a bright, evenly lit place and have good contrast and separation between your subject and the background. In my example, I'm wearing light clothes against a dark background and standing about 6 to 8 feet away from the wall. Your camera needs to be perfectly still, so it's best to set it on a tripod and film against a simple static background. And here's the most important part. During the first or the last second of your clip, you need a clean plate of your background. This is what Final Cut Pro will use for reference when isolating your subject. Once you film your clip, import it into Final Cut Pro and drop it down into your timeline. Press Command 5 to open your effects browser, select the Masks and Keying category, and grab the Senior Mobile Mask. Drag and drop this effect over your clip. This is all you need to do. If you follow the filming instructions, your subjects should be perfectly cut out. To demonstrate this even better, I'll add a custom generator below my clip and set the color to pink, just so we can clearly see. Let's take a look at a couple more clips and see how to deal with some issues that might come up. In my next clip, when I apply the Senior Mobile Mask, only a part of my background is removed. This is because the frame I use for reference isn't a clean plate of my background. If I disable the mask and go back to the first frame, you can see a part of my body is still in the frame. You get four options you can use for a reference frame. First frame, first frame plus one second, last frame minus one second, and last frame. If one of these four frame options is a clean play of your background, select it, and you'll get a much better key than before. The last clip I want to show you is a little bit more tricky. I didn't follow the film instructions for this one, and I'm in the frame in all four reference frame options. Even if I ripple trim my clip so it starts on a clean plate of my background in my timeline, Final Cut Pro still references the original clip for this, so that doesn't really help. Luckily, I do have a few frames of a clean background a couple seconds into my clip, so in this case, I can trim the clip outside of Final Cut Pro and re-import it back in. Select your clip in the media browser, Right click on it and select Reveal in Finder. Make a copy of this clip by holding down the Option key and dragging it out to your desktop. Right click on this clip and open it with QuickTime. From the menu bar select Edit and Trim. Use the yellow handles to trim your clip so either the first or the last frame is a clean plate of your background. Save your clip and import it back into Final Cut Pro. Adding a scene removal mask now gives us a much better result. So now, with your background removed, here's a couple things we can do with our clip. The first thing we can do is obviously add another clip or one of the new animated backgrounds behind our subject. To add a new background, just select a clip or a generator in your media browser and drag it down into your timeline, connecting it under your original clip. Your cutout will be superimposed on top of the clip you've just added. Another thing you can do is add a color grade or an effect to your background to make your subject pop. Let's add a bit of blur to the background in our next clip for a shallow depth of field look. First thing we need to do is duplicate a clip. Select it, hold down the Option key, and drag straight up to make a copy of it. Select the bottom copy, go up to the Video Inspector, and remove the Scene Removal Mask by selecting it and hitting Delete. In your Effects Browser, select the Blurs category, grab the Gaussian Blur effect, and apply it to your bottom clip. Bring down the amount to about 15 to make this look more realistic. Perhaps the most useful thing we can do with a scene removal mask is use it to add text behind a moving subject. Just like before, make a copy of your clip and delete the scene removal mask from the bottom clip. Go to your Titles and Generators browser. Select the title preset you want to use for this and drag it down into your timeline. 
place this title between your two clips and adjust it to look exactly the way you want. So that's the new scene removal mask in Final Cut Pro. As you can see, it's far from perfect, but there is a few things it can be very useful for. If you want something that works quite a bit better and it's not so limiting, check out the Keeper plugin from FX Factory. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.